Hey there everybody and welcome back to The Ranch. In the last episode, I discussed Valentine, her failure to grow, and her eventual death after three years and three months. So in this episode, I decided we're going to look at the exact opposite. Let's look at tortoises that grow very well. You know, one of the most common questions that I see come up on Facebook, on tortoise forums, people that ask me that when I meet them and they talk about their tortoises is, is my tortoise growing right? You know, is it growing too slow? Is it growing too fast? How big should it be? It's two years old. You know, that, that question comes up over and over and over again. And a long time ago, I realized, you know, I had a pretty good idea, but I really had no way to prove what I thought. After a complete shift in the way I viewed research and the value of it back in about 2014 or 15, I realized I want to try to answer that question and I want to have the data to prove it. So in 2016, I began keeping notes on my tortoises, weighing them every so often to try to, to gauge it. And then by 2017, I had, a, I had a spreadsheet and I was weighing them every single week. Every month, I was measuring them from front to back, the straight carapace length. And I also eventually realized that, hey, this data is pretty cool, but it'd be great if I could back this up with some photographs or with some video. So in addition to writing everything down, once a month when I measured the tortoises, I would take a picture on the same background. In some of my earlier pictures, they were on a black background for best, the best contrast, or it might have been the very first picture I took of the animal. But I knew I needed something standard for them to lay on. And I found what I was looking for in the craft section of Walmart a little cutting mat. Along with using calipers to get the actual measurement, I realized that would be a really good tool to get a standard photograph every single month over and over again. Eventually, my Galapagos tortoises outgrew the one that I had. You'll see in these upcoming pictures when they graduate to a larger cutting mat that has the exact same one inch squares on there. When it comes to the spreadsheet itself, I chose to measure my tortoises in centimeters and grams. And from week to week, I look at the difference in weight. Now, some people ask the question, how many grams or how many ounces should my tortoise gain every week? Well, that's really not a good question because you see these little leopards back here, they only weigh about 40 grams. A difference of 10 grams in a week, either gaining or loss, that's huge. That's like 25% of their entire weight. Well, if you look at my Galapagos tortoises that weigh almost 50 pounds, 10 grams is an inhale and an exhale. So a more standard unit for individual tortoises is just percentage. How much more than your weight last week do you weigh now? If a tortoise weighs 100 grams and it gains five, well, that's about a 5% difference. If it loses 10, that's a 10% difference. And that standard can be scaled up no matter how big and heavy the tortoise is. So using that type of measurement, when I look across the 15 species of tortoises that I keep and I look at four years of data, I can see that the average tortoise grows about 2% every week. Now, sometimes they have dips backwards, sometimes they grow a little bit more, they have a growth spurt, but on average, over the years, most tortoises grow at about 2%. Now, some species have a little bit larger. My Galapagos tortoises are growing about 5% every single week. That's a lot. My Indian star tortoises, uh, they're growing about 4% every week. And then I have other tortoises that are, you know, they're almost adults, so they're barely growing. Tortoises grow differently at different stages in life. Of course, baby tortoises, their entire goal is to get larger so they can get, they can eat all the good food and be as predator proof as possible. And then once they get to a certain age, they kind of slow down growing. So let's have a look at that spreadsheet that I was telling you about. Here is a look at that spreadsheet. You can see that I weigh everybody every week and I look at the difference in weight from week to week in percentage. I also measure everybody's straight carapace length once a month. Along with being able to look at raw numbers, this table lets me create charts like this. I can compare the growth curves of individuals within the same species, and I can also compare the growth curves of individuals from different species. We have all these tables with numbers, we got graphs with cool lines and stuff, and I'm sure you're thinking, cool story nerd, but what does that actually mean? What does that translate into when I'm looking at my tortoise? I've talked about this before. My favorite tortoises to watch grow are, are tortoises with radiating patterns. Obviously the radiated tortoise, star tortoises also, because it's so cool to see the patterns 
slowly coming in at the edges of the scoots as the scoots get larger and larger and larger and their lines get longer and then they start to branch off. It's just really cool to see. You guys get to see in seven minutes what it's taken me almost half a decade to capture in images. Let me stop talking so you guys can see how amazing the changes are that take place in the tortoise over time.